Good morning, beloveds. So we are in March and I believe that March is the last month. Um, and then in on April 1st, we will move on to a new book. Um, yeah. I said I might do uh, the um, February 29th last night. Uh, I got sidetracked by a phone call and we were watching figure skating. So I didn't do it. I will make an effort to get it done just to, to make sure that I have it. Um, but yeah, we're almost done. We're almost done with 365 days of richer living. We were on, to, well, we'll be on to the new book. The, the next book that I'm going to do is uh, a book that uh, Jesse suggested for me and has loaned me his copy, at which point I pointed out to him, give me the copy, the, the book early. Because if you loan me a book for 365 days that I use literally every day, it's not going to come back in the same shape that you gave it to me. <laughs> Which the good news was, is I was able to find a copy of it um, <clears throat> on uh, Abe Books. So if you haven't, uh, there's there's lots of places to buy used books, but Abe happened to be the, the, the site that I found it on. Uh, and they had more than one copy, just in case. But... Um, yeah, it's, um, they, and they had a lot of really interesting old books. Uh, I was actually able to buy a book from 1919. Now I'm not getting a book from 1919. What I'm getting is a, literally a photocopy. <laughs> it's literally a, they, uh, um, they, they make copies of the pages of the books. And then they say, Hey, some, they, these books are old and some of these pages may be damaged and flawed. Um, but I thought it'd be interesting. Um, I believe it's, uh, it's a Fenwick Holmes book. And I was just like, you know what? I'm going to give this a try. We'll see. It cost me like $7. So, you know, I was like, we'll see what it looks like. Okay. So it is March 1st. Our title is, I am strong with the power of God. Our quote is from Romans 13, 1. Let every soul be subjected unto the higher powers. For there is no power but of God. The power that be, the powers that be are ordained of God. The Bible tells us that the powers that are ordained, the powers, uh, the Bible tells us that the powers that be are ordained of God of God, not by God. Interesting. But since God exists everywhere, the power of God is wherever we recognize it. Not only all the presence, but all the power. We have no power of ourselves as though we were separate entities. Therefore, we say with the psalmist that our strength cometh from the Lord who have made heaven and earth. What we really do is what we really do is to use a power greater than we are, which power is our strength, but we ourselves are not the power. For ourselves, we can do nothing, nor of ourselves do we even hold our bodies in place. Rather, we rely on the power of gravitational force, which operates upon us. In just such a manner, we are operated upon by spiritual powers, which become our strength when we use them. It is in this sense that we are strong with the power of God, the only power there is. My strength cometh from the Lord, who, ha who made heaven and earth. Recognizing the strength, which is perfect, complete, and ever-present with me, I have implicit trust and confidence, not only in its availability right where I am, but in its action in and through everything I am doing. There is a power behind my every thought and word. There is a power upholding and sustaining me in everything I do. There's a power going before me and preparing my way. I rest in this power in calm and serene confidence with perfect trust and faith. I know that this power is good, it is constructive. It is activated by love. It is directed by divine intelligence. And I use it even in the simplest things in my life. Today, then, I accept all that all the power there is belongs to me. 
in joy, in gladness. I recognize and use this power. Therefore, today I am sustained and upheld by it in peace, in joy, and in wholeness. All right. So, okay, yeah, there were a lot of words and I'm going to go back and think about this, but really what caught my attention first is literally that first line. The Bible tell us, tells us that the powers that be are ordained of God. At which point, because most of the time when I hear that, I hear it said by God. The powers that be are ordained by God, which now makes me want to go look up the thing and go, so is it of or by? Because it is a completely different interpretation of or by. That one little article there makes a huge difference because so many times we're told, well, this is ordained by God, meaning God wants this to happen. But that's not what this says. This says they are, are ordained of God, meaning that the powers that be, people who are in power, are using God's power. It doesn't mean God chose them to use God's power in such a way, but that absolutely everybody has access to God's power. And these people have chosen to use it in this way. They were not chosen by God to use it in this way. They were chosen by God. They were chosen. They, everyone, everyone has access to the same power. So when people come at you and go, well, this was the, you know, the, the powers that be by God or, or ordained by God. No, no. Especially if they're using it in inappropriate ways. No, they were not ordained by God to use it. Every single one of us has the right to use the, that same power. We just don't take it. Hmm. I mean, that just shakes me to the very foundation, to the very core of my being. They were not ordained by God to use this. That we were ordained of God by virtue of who we are. We are beloved children of God. So when somebody comes at you and says, ordained by God, no. You were ordained of God. And so if you are making an inappropriate use and you come at me with that argument that you were ordained by God, no, you weren't. God did not come down and tell you to use that power in such a way that is not righteous. Okay, I'm going to stop there just to make sure that I don't get weirdly political. But you see where I'm going. You see where I'm going. And just, you know, for future reference, this is partly about, um, this is partly about Ukraine and partly because there's a vote today. And I have been, I've watched a fair number of political ads and frankly, yeah. I think politicians and people who make political ads need to stop lying because that is all they're doing. I have not seen a political ad on my TV that has, you know, especially when they're talking about their opponent that has one element of truth. I mean, in many cases, they're straight up lies. They're straight up lies. You can talk to a person for a week straight and only know a tenth about that person. All right. So when somebody comes up to you and says such and such about so-and-so, they don't know. And most likely they are spinning it to get you to sway one way or another. All right. I'm going to stop. I'm going to stop. I'm going to stop. All right. I am strong with the power of God. Let every soul be subject unto the higher powers, for there is no power but of God. The powers that be are ordained of God. All right? Of God. Romans 13.1. Not 
by God, of God. Now I want to go read it in context and see what they were talking about. Oof. Okay. The Bible tells us that the powers that be are, are ordained of God. And since God exists everywhere, the power of God is wherever we recognize it, wherever we recognize it. <laughs> Not only all the presence, but all the power. We have no power of ourselves as though we were separate entities. Therefore, we say with the psalmist that our strength cometh from the Lord who made heaven and earth. And we say that. We say that. We say, you know, the, the, the will that we are using, the strength that we are using, the power that we are using, it's not ours. It's coming through us. We were literally made to use it. And we were made to use it creatively, harmoniously, peacefully. Do we always make that choice? No. It's where that free will comes in. But we were made to use that power because it flows through us out into the world. You know, we are one of the channels where spirit comes into form. And when we recognize that one of two, th there's two things to recognize. One, the power is coming through us, not from us. And it is coming from an inexhaustible source. Therefore, the power to do what it is that we came here to do will never run out. We will always have the power. So it is up to us to do the spiritual work to plug into that power and not try and, and, and white knuckle through it on our own. All right. Um, what we really do is use a greater, a power greater than we are, which power is our strength, but we ourselves are not the power. All right. So the power is our strength. That's where it's coming from, but we're not making it. We are plugging into that power. Um, of ourselves, we can do nothing, nor of ourselves. Do we even hold our bodies in place here? He's making an argument. It's like, how do you stay on this planet? How do you not get flung off into space in the rotation of the planet? Because if you think about it, it, that's, it's, it's actually the centrifugal force. It's kind of terrifying. Gravity, gravity, gravity. Um, rather, we rely on the power of gravitational force, which operates upon us. So he's making, he's like, okay, gravity. We can't see it, but we feel it. Same thing with God. We can't see it outside of everything around us is made of God. Um, but we can feel it. We can absolutely feel it. In just such a manner, we are operated upon by spiritual powers, which become our strength when we use them. When we use them. It is up to us to plug in. It is up to us to do our spiritual work. It is up to us to do our spiritual practice so we know who we are. Uh, it is this sense that we are strong with the power of God. The only power there is. My strength cometh from the Lord who made heaven and earth. Recognizing this strength, which is perfect, complete, and ever present with me, I have implicit trust and confidence, not only in its availability right where I am, but in its action in and through everything I am doing. One, I know it's there. And two, I know it will never fail. I can fail. But the power never does. So if I'm the one failing, then what work is it that I need to do to um, make better use of what is available to me? All right. There is a power behind my every thought and word when I am open to it. It is about opening the mind and the heart. There is a power upholding and sustaining me in everything I do. There is a power going before me and preparing my way. I rest in this power in calm and serene confidence with perfect trust and faith. And that is asking a lot. That is asking a lot. That is asking you to have faith in the power 
that be the power that be that is that the only power that is and to name it love and that is the power that i'm going to have faith in i'm going to have faith in the power of love because that's what i believe god is because i believe god is good i believe god is love i don't believe god is an old man sitting in a chair with a book judging everything that i do i don't i can't live in that world and i won't I believe that God is a patterning intelligence, a creative mind. I believe that God is love. And all of the amazing things that come out of that. Can it be misused? Absolutely. Look at how we use the word love and the terrible things that we do in its name. But that's us. That's not God. I know that this power is good. It is constructive. It is activated by love. It is directed by divine intelligence. And I use it even in the simplest things in my life. That's, you know, don't save treatment for the big things. Don't save prayer for the big things. Use it for absolutely everything. Treat when things are good so that when things go sideways, you got a groove to slip into. Today, then, I accept that all the power there is belongs to me. In joy and in gladness, I recognize it and use this power. Therefore, today, I am sustained and upheld by it in peace, in joy, and in wholeness. All right, beloveds. I'm sure that there is a mission in here. And I'm going to go with this one because I need it. I don't know about you. So the mission today, should we choose to accept it, is to rest in this power in calm and serene confidence. Because I need calm and serene. Not confidence. I got plenty of that. What I need is calm and serene. Um, I tell you that when you read stuff like this, that what's going on in your life and what's going on in the world will affect the way you read this well there are primary votes going on today that is definitely affecting me there is and i'm going to call it nonsense uh going on between russia well with russia i'm just gonna say with russia you know um because your ukraine didn't ask for this uh and you know and i got some difficult news about a friend of mine So, yeah, I need the calm and serene today. Um, so there, there's your mission. The other thing that I'm going to do, because this I need this today more than anything else, uh, is the spiritual practice of doing something loving for yourself, doing something kind for yourself, doing something compassionate for yourself, whatever it looks like. Uh, I, I have a sneaky suspicion that today it will be, there will be a lot of three deep breaths, the three deep breaths to give myself that pause that I need to have a response, not a reaction today. Um, and then I could be prejudging my day. I don't know, but it is what it is. And I will leave it at that. So, uh, whatever it looks like to you to do that loving, kind, compassionate thing for yourself, do it every day. You are a beloved child of God. You deserve your own love, your own kindness, your own compassion. And I am encouraging you to do the spiritual practice, to create the habit, to create the default setting, to create the first response. So then no matter what happens in your world, you can have a loving, kind and compassionate response to yourself and to everybody else that, that, uh, you encounter. All right. Um, so welcome to March. Uh, I, it does seem like it has come in like a lion. <laughs> <laughs> just not in the weather way. Uh, so do what you need to take care of yourself. Let's start with doing something to engage our mind and our body. Go get a face full of sun first thing in the morning. Having the sun has been very helpful. Uh, and then uh, drinking plenty of water. I mean, hydration, it can go a long way to sort a whole lot of our issues. If we're a little dehydrated, that can make us a little, you know. Um, so I'm going to go get a good drink of water here in a minute. Uh, but open the windows of your soul. Allow the breath of heaven to remind you, you do live in heaven right here, right now. It's all around us. And one of the fastest ways to find it is to look for the good and praise it. 
opening the windows of our soul is that's a quote from Ernest, but looking for the good and praising it, that's Emma Curtis Hopkins. Two titans of new thought, two um, hugely influential people on science of mind and centers for spiritual living. And I'm going to take their advice and do that. So uh, do what you need to do to have a great day, an amazing day, a wondrous day, an enchanting day, a magical day, a sunny day, a good day. And if that is too much pressure, simply have a day because you are enough just as you are. All right. Um, if you want to know what's going on with us, email info at creativelife.org. Get on that. You can always check and see what we've got going on on the Facebook page. Um, or, you know, there's wonderful stuff on the YouTube. I, I try and organize those playlists to make finding what you need easy. Uh, so Creative Life Spiritual Center or uh, Instagram and TikTok is Creative Life Spark. I'm the running Rev Ryan on several of those channels as well. So, you know, feel free to look me up. Not just here. Uh, occasionally I have interesting things to say because, <laughs> you know, I talk every day. Um, but take care of yourself. Know that you are loved. Know that you are loved. You are a beloved child of God. And it is a state of grace. All right. It doesn't have to be earned and it can't be taken away. It is granted. And that is what grace means. All right, beloveds. I'm going to move into the process of my day. You take care of yourself. Reverend David will be on around 5 p.m. with you. I'll be back with you at 9 a.m. All right, beloveds. Until next time.